In this video, we will walk through all the steps needed to deploy double key encryption for Microsoft 365. There are nine steps outlined in the double key encryption documentation. These steps include installing software prerequisites, cloning the DKE GitHub repository, modifying application settings, generating OpenSSL test keys, building the project, publishing the key store as an Azure app service, validating your deployment, registering the key store as an Azure AD application, and finally creating labels to encrypt content using DKE. The first step in deploying double key encryption is to install the software prerequisites on the computer where you want to set up the DKE service. The prerequisites include the .NET Core 3.1 SDK, Visual Studio Code and relevant extensions, Microsoft Office with a version number ending in 12711 or later, some version of Git, the Azure Information Protection Unified Labeling Client with version number 2.7.93.0 or later, and OpenSSL. I have already installed these prerequisites on my system, but you can find links to each of these software packages at https aka.ms slash dke docs. Please pause this video or return to this timecode after you have installed the prerequisites on your system. The next step in deploying double key encryption is to clone the DKE Git repository. The DKE GitHub repository is located at https aka.ms slash DKE repo. Browse to this location and click on the green code button. Select the clone URL and copy it to your clipboard. Next, open Visual Studio Code and press Control shift p to bring up the command window. In the command window, type git colon clone and press Enter. Now paste the copied URL into the text box and press Enter to clone the repository. When the Select Folder dialog appears, choose a location to store the code. After cloning is complete, select Open to load the repository in Visual Studio Code. Now that we have the DKE source repository set up locally, we can continue with modifying the application settings for your organization. There are two types of application settings you must modify to deploy DKE, key access settings and tenant and key settings. These settings are found under the SRC customer key store in the appsettings.json file. The first set of settings we must modify are the key access settings. DKE supports two types of authentication, email authorization and role authorization, but only one of these methods at a time. Email authorization allows your organization to authorize access to keys based on email addresses only. This is enabled with the authorized email addresses key. Role authorization allows your organization to authorize access to keys based on Active Directory groups and requires that the web service can query LDAP. This is enabled with the authorized roles key. For this demo, we will use email authorization. To do this, we will clear out the text in the LDAP path and remove the authorized roles line from the app settings. Next, we will add a comma-separated list of email addresses in the Authorized Email Addresses line. Now that we have configured our authorization settings, we can move on to the tenant and key settings. For this, we must modify the settings for valid issuers, JWT audience, and the test key's name and ID. For valid issuers, we must replace the text tenant ID with our actual tenant ID from Azure Active Directory. This can be found in the AAD blade in the Azure portal.
Next, we must populate the JWT audience value with the full URL where we will host the DKE service endpoint. For this example, I will be using an Azure app service, but this can also be hosted on premises. Now we must add a name and ID for our test key. The name can be anything you choose, and the ID should be a new GUID. I have used the new GUID PowerShell commandlet to generate a GUID for this purpose. Now that we have our application settings defined, we're ready to generate public and private test keys. Make sure that you have added OpenSSL to your environment variables path or browse to your OpenSSL bin directory. Add a command prompt, paste the first OpenSSL command from the documentation. You will be prompted for a private key password and some arbitrary values. After you have completed creating the key, paste the second line from the documentation and provide the password you set previously. Finally, paste the third line from the documentation and provide the password. Next, we will browse to the directory where the files are located and open the pubkeyonly.pem file and copy the contents. We will paste the contents in the public PIM setting and remove all line breaks to make a single line. We will repeat this process using the private key no pass.pim file to populate the private PIM setting. Take care when removing line breaks that you do not accidentally remove any of the PIM key data. Next, we will open startup.cs and remove a few lines to allow our test keys to function. Now that we have completed populating our application settings and keys, we can build the project. To build the project, in Visual Studio Code, press Ctrl-Shift-B and Enter. If no build tasks are found, press Enter to configure a build task. Press Enter again to create a task.json file from template. Choose .NET Core. In the build section, paste the path to the CS project file found in the documentation. Now press Ctrl-Shift-B and Enter to run the build. Finally, press F5 to debug the process. Choose .NET Core. A browser will open to a 404 page. At the end of the URL, add slash in the name of your key to validate that the build was successful. We will now publish the key store to an Azure app service. This could also be published to an on-premises web server if desired. In the Azure portal, we will click on the menu and select app services. Click the Create App Service button to create a new app service. On the Create Web App page, select or create a resource group, provide a globally unique web app name, and select .NET Core 3.1 for the runtime stack. 
and finally click Review and Create. On the Review and Create page, review your settings and click Create. Once the deployment is complete, you can click Go to Resource to open your new app service. Next, we will publish the code to your web service. We will do this using the Zip Deploy UI. This can be found at yourservicename.scm.azurewebsites.net slash zip deploy UI. Once we have this open, we will open a command prompt to our code location and run .NET Publish to publish our code. Next, we will open a File Explorer window to the Publish directory and zip all of the contents. Finally, we will drag the zip file to the zip deploy UI to deploy our code. The next step in deploying DKE is to validate our deployment. We do this validation by opening a PowerShell window to the scripts directory of the repository and running keystoretester.ps1 against the full DKE URL, including the key name. The next step in the process is to register the key store as an Azure AD application. To register the key store, open the Azure portal and go to Azure Active Directory. Under Azure Active Directory, click on App Registrations. Click on New Registration, and on the Register and Application page, enter a name and the URL of your DKE service as the redirect URI, then click Register. In the new app registration, on the left under Manage, click Authentication. On the authentication page, scroll down to the implicit grant section and check the box next to ID tokens, then click Save. Next on the left, click Expose an API. On the Expose an API page, click Set next to Application ID URI and enter the full URL of your DKE service. Next, in the Scopes defined by this API section, click Add a Scope. In the Add a Scope blade, define the scope name as user underscore impersonation and set who can consent to admins and users. Complete the rest of the fields and click Add Scope. Next, click Add a Client Application. In the Client Application blade, enter the Client ID for Microsoft Office from the documentation, check the box next to the User Impersonation Scope, and click Add Application. The final step in deploying DKE is to create a DKE label. To create a new label, go to the Classification menu in the Security and Compliance Center and click on Sensitivity Labels.
In the Sensitivity Label section, click on Create a Label. In the New Sensitivity Label dialog, provide a name and description for your new DKE label and click Next. On the encryption page, in the drop-down menu, select Apply. Under Assign Permissions to Specific Users and Groups, click the Assign Permissions link. In the Assign Permissions dialog, click the link to add all users and groups in your organization and click Save. Next, check the box next to double key encryption and enter the DKE service URL and key name. Click Next three times, then click Create Label. Now that the label has been created, we will add it to a policy. On the Sensitivity Labels page, click Label Policies. On the Label Policies tab, select the policy you want to add the label to and click Edit Policy. On the Choose Sensitivity Labels to Publish page, click Edit. In the Sensitivity Labels to Publish dialog, select the DKE label and click Add. Click Next four times and click Submit. We have successfully created a DKE label and published it to a policy. You should now be able to use this label to double key encrypt your documents.